Hello students. So for the, uh, uh, so in this video, I am going to be talking about splitting and stacking data. This is one of the uh, earlier introductions into manipulating data and getting it into different uh, formats and shapes that, so that you can have your data set in a format that is appropriate for the task at hand. Uh, so let's, for example, consider the function box plot. You've seen multiple ways to make box plots. You could um, call the box plot function on two separate vectors, x and y. Uh, you could uh, save your data in a data frame and use the formula interface where you have in your data frame uh, one column that represents data and another column that represents group. Uh, you could have your data be in a list and you call box plot on that list and it will uh, create separate box plots for everything in the list. And which approach is the best? There, The answer is there really isn't one. It depends essentially on what you are trying to do with your data, um, what, what expectations are made of it, and so on. So... Uh, there may be many situations where one approach to a data format may be superior, may be uh, needed, uh, and your data is not in that format. Uh, so, for example, if you're using uh, the function ggplot uh, from the ggplot2 package, ggplot expects your data to be in a very specific format. And you need to make sure that your data is in that format before you can make actually use that function. And you probably do want to use that function because ggplot is uh, an excellent graphics package. So we're going to talk about a couple functions called split and stack um, that are for uh, transitioning your data between different formats. Uh, so. Uh, it, and basically these formats that I'm referring to, you can have a format where you have a list. Your list consists of separate vectors, each of those vectors representing a separate data set. Or you could have a data frame where your uh, data in that data frame, you have one column representing your data and another column representing your uh, what, what group each data point belongs to. Like, for example, if you were to look at the iris data set. So let's look at iris. Uh, well, that's too many. So head iris. If we look at the iris data set, we can imagine that uh, the pedal width column is our only column, and this column species is telling us which uh, data set each observation came from. And that's one way we could format our data, or we could have a list where that list has three vectors in it, one for each species, Satosa, Versicolor, and Virginica, and each of those vectors contains uh, the respective data sets. And I would like to talk about trans uh, transitioning between these two formats. This will appear more in a, in a later uh, series of videos. So um, let's go ahead and talk about this. There are two uh, functions I'm going to talk about today, which are split and stack. Split will create a list of vectors. Uh, where each data point in the vector v is included in a vector identified by the vector g. So if we were to use split on this data set, we could use split to create a list of vectors where the list's components are going to be vectors corresponding to each of these species, and the vector contents would be pedal width. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, see an example of this already. Uh, so we've already seen the iris data set. If we were to split the sepal length by the species like so, uh, this is the resulting uh, uh, list of vectors. So we've taken each of those, like you can notice if we look at the Satosa vector uh, and we look at the sepal length that this is basically all of the elements that go into the Satosa vector. And here we can see like Virginica, a little bit of Virginica. Last observation is 5.9. So what ended up happening was we've now split into each of those vectors. And what could we possibly do after we have our data in a format like this? Well, we could use S apply to get the median for each data set. So we give S apply this list of vectors and tell it to apply the median function to each element of that list. It will take the median of each data of uh, each vector, and this will be the resulting vector of medians. 
which is rather nice. Uh, it would actually be rather difficult to uh, get medians using just uh, this data frame as is, and especially if what you were doing was trying to uh, do subsetting operations to identify which species you want to work with, this is much easier, right? This is much easier for getting all of those medians. And uh, there are other things that we could do. We could uh, take each of those vectors and treat them as their own thing. We have a Satosa vector, we have a vers Versicolor vector, and a Virginica vector. So just taking all those vectors out of that list, uh, we could then make density plots for each of those uh, vectors. So we've made, here we basically have uh, comparative density plots. Uh, and uh, when we have our data set in a format like this, there's actually, uh, it's like, uh, so here's what we did for split. Uh, if we if we go look back at split, we did iris dollar sepal length, iris dollar species, um, where this is the data set we want to split, and this is the vector that identifies uh, the groups that each observation in this vector belong to. And that's fine, but this operation actually lends, la ne lends naturally to the formula interface. So we could use a library, uh, a package called desk tools. I'm not sure if I, oops, uh, I'm not sure if I have this uh, library installed. Yeah, I do not. So I'm going to need to install that. Uh, desk tools and uh, we'll just do 62. All right, so while it's installing, we can use this package to split the data set in a more intuitive way where we say the sepal length essentially depends on the species. So split like so, the data set will be the iris data set. And that should get us, I mean, that's just a more natural way. It removes the dollar signs and tells us exactly what type of relationship between these two things we're looking at. So we can split using uh, a call like this. And then after that, we will uh, look at the data set uh, after we have this um, all installed. So oh, and, and just for what it's worth, these uh, vectors need to be of the same length that we are like the vector that contains your data needs to be of the same length as the vector identifying which group each observation belongs to, which should make sense because Otherwise, you're not going to be able to, <coughs> like if uh, your G vector were shorter than your V vector, then there would be observations you don't know what group they belong to. And if it's vice versa, that's just an indication that something isn't quite right. So that 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 should make some sense. Um, I have some further examples here. For example, if uh, we have a vector of tweet, uh, if we have a vector tweet, and this is a vector of strings representing tweets by Twitter users, and the user... Uh, vector is a vector that identifies who wrote a tweet, uh, and uh, this vector corresponds to each element in tweet, then we could split the tweets by the user so that we could create a vector, uh, or so that we could create a list, and this list contains vectors where each unique uh, user has their own vector corresponding to their own tweets. And... Uh, it, and uh, this list will have named components corresponding to uh, the elements in this user vector. Uh, so that will help us identify <coughs> uh, where our observations went. So this might take a while to install, I guess. Or actually, it might almost be done. Let's close this. Oh, come on. Well, at some point, it will be done.
Hmm. Well, anyway, while uh, I continue to wait on that uh, package installing, and I don't know why it's just hanging like that, but uh, while we wait, let's go ahead and talk about stack. So the stack function basically does the opposite of the split function. With stack, you take a list of vectors, and these vectors are named appropriately according to the group to which uh, each of those vectors are, are uh, containing, and it will return a data frame, and that data frame will have a column for the data and a column identifying the group to which each data point belongs to. So kind of like how our iris data set, we had a simple length column that contained the data itself and another column called species. Uh, all right, so it looks like that's done. Uh, and then we had another column called species uh, that uh, told us what species each observation was. Uh, this, uh, we, could basic, we could basically recreate that using the, the stack function. Let's go ahead and run this function call that I just took so long. Oh, that looks like a... Okay, this looks like some weird thing. So, oh wait, no, I know, I know what's wrong. I need to actually load in the library. And now we wait for it to load up, even though this should be much quicker than it's taking. Uh, whatever. And, oh, okay. All right. We're, we're good now. So now if I run it, all right, now it works. So then if I look at L2, so we get basically what we had before. This is the same as L. There's really no difference. It's just that this is a better interface. So it's, it's easier to use. Now that said, given something like this, we have like vector, uh, vector Satosa, uh, Versicolor and Virginica. Oops. Um, these vectors. Let I mean, we we took the iris data set. Ah, darn it! I need to turn off my pad. Okay. So we we have this uh, iris data set. Let's look at the first few rows of the iris data set. Okay. So here's the iris data set. We would like to go from uh, having separate vectors like this back to the original data set. And stack could be very helpful with that. Um, so we actually, I have an example here in the, uh, uh, in, in the uh, lecture notes. Uh, we could pr potentially give stack a list. So for example, if we were to do uh, stack um, L, notice, let's do... Let's let's actually look at the first few rows of that, because uh, that's a lot of rows. Okay, notice that basically we are back to where we were before. We basically have the iris data set as it was originally. I mean, the the column names aren't quite right, but uh, and also other columns are missing, which makes perfect sense because we didn't uh, actually decide to uh, include them. But uh, the but but basically it's the same as we had before. So we've in a sense, undone what we did when we split. So we could have separate vectors. We could have a list of vectors or something like that, but we can go from having separate vectors for each group to a data frame, uh, having this um, data, data and uh, data, like a data point and a data set uh, format. So uh, we could also do... Uh, like if we had separate vectors, like here I have an example where we have vectors for serial. We have FF that contains, um, that's a vector that contains the weight of boxes of frosted flakes. TRX is a uh, weight of boxes for tricks. And CCP contains uh, Cocoa, Puff, Cocoa Puffs uh, box weights. We could create a data frame that contains all this information uh, using the stack function. So... Uh, we have these uh, individual vectors. If we wanted to stack them into a uh, single data frame, we could do so with stack by treating these vectors uh, as uh, being in a list. And the list has named elements that identifies 
uh, which data set each vector or which uh, group each vector belongs to. Uh, so this is in fact the type of format that the ggplot package is expecting. So that would make uh, plotting with these vectors easier. In fact, I don't think you could really use ggplot without putting these vectors into this format. Uh, so. So, uh, let's see. Uh, here is another example where uh, we uh, uh, take this tooth growth data set. So here's the tooth growth data set. Uh, we're going to split the tooth length by the supplement type. So this is the resulting vector. So we have uh, a vector for orange juice and a vector for vitamin C. Uh, we could basically undo this operation with stack. And this is the resulting vector. So we go kind of back to where we were before. Uh, so, although it did order the uh, columns differently, uh, the original tooth growth data set started with vitamin C. This new vector starts with uh, this new data frame starts with orange juice, but uh, it's fine. So it, it's still essentially, or, or at the very least, you could possibly work with that. Okay, so that is it for this video and uh, for this uh, series of lectures, and uh, I will see you later.